Hello again, my name is Jeff Tehan. I'm a quality engineer for the Red Hat Cloud Forms product. In episode 6, I'll be showing you how to perform smart state analysis on System Center, and more specifically, Hyper-V hosted virtual machines. I will cover how to enable smart state analysis, how to configure a Hyper-V host for remote access, initiation of smart state analysis. I'll also show you how to monitor and troubleshoot the process while it's occurring, and lastly, I'll point you to a Mojo page and additional documentation that should answer any additional questions you may have. So, thank you very much, and I hope you find this helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is go check and make sure our System Center uh, provider has been added. And we need to make sure that it has host attached to it. Um, in this case, it does. If you look over on the right side, you'll see three hosts there. Now that we have a provider added, what we want to do is go into the configuration and set up uh, smart state analysis. Um, and while we're in there, we'll set up the, um, the domain administrator for the uh, Windows zone. Uh, the first thing we do is go under server control. Um, smart state analysis should be on or you can turn it on. And smart proxy is also required to do smart state analysis on some systems. So I just go ahead and turn this on as well as long as we're in here. And then we can go to the zone and we're going to edit the zone configuration and we're going to go ahead and add the, um, the domain administrator where the system center appliance itself sits. So while I'm adding this, um, you should know that the purpose of smart state analysis is to be able to go in and identify um, critical components of a VM and analyze them further, such as users, uh, files, services, uh, basically any information that might be useful for either troubleshooting or just uh, basic monitoring of your system. All right, so we've gone ahead and added this in. Um, now any domain related um, connectivity required uh, between cloud forms uh, and system center will now be able to connect. So let's go back to the provider. Um, you can go directly to host from this point, but um, I like to just go through the uh, details page and make sure you understand that you can quickly link to um, all the various relationships. Uh, in this case, we're going to go into host and we're going to configure the host so that we have remote access to it. So I have uh, three hosts here. Um, two of them are actually uh, set up with Hyper-V. Um, I'm just going to configure one of these right now, but uh, for the most part, you should have both of them configured. And in a test environment, you may or may not have access to our domain. So you might want to update your host files on the appliance itself uh, to point to reference the IP address from the uh, uh, fully qualified name. That way, you don't have to worry about connectivity issues. In a production environment, that would probably never be necessary. So there's a default endpoint, and then there's remote, and there's web services. Um, I think it's best just to go ahead and set up all three as long as we're in here. The other thing you'll notice is that for the domain, I'm using local. Uh, local for a Windows domain is the same thing as localhost for a, for a web server. Um, the benefit of using local rather than the actual machine name is that if the machine name ever does get renamed for whatever reason, um, we're still going to be able to log into that machine. So um, you don't have to worry about you know six months from now an IT guy renaming your server under you and then losing connectivity for your uh, analysis. So we'll go ahead and save that. And when we get back to the host, what we'll do is we'll scroll down the details page here, and I'll show you that the, um, um, all three of these uh, credentials have been validated. So we're good to go. If there's any errors, if you had the wrong username or password, um, you would see errors here, and you need to go back and uh, recheck your work. Now we need to find a VM to do a smart state analysis on it. So in this case, I'm just going to skip directly to my virtual machines. Um, I already have one set up for this demo, so it would be easier for me to find the, the files and folders that I'll be needing as we go through this. And I'll just do a quick search. Here's my local 
33 is uh, QE blade 33. That's where the VM's at. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to scroll down. You'll see that, um, that it's never been analyzed. And on the right side, under configuration and security and all these other details, they're all zero. So um, this has never been performed on this VM uh, from this CloudForms instance. What I want to do is take you over to Hyper-V and actually bring up the folder that this uh, VM is living in. Um, so you can see that there's a there's a, a hard disk here. Okay, with our host configured and our VM selected, uh, let's go ahead and um, initiate the process. Um, when it's properly configured, you'll see Perform Smart State Analysis is available from the configuration menu. And we'll just go ahead and get it started. So that's the other topic we wanted to cover was monitoring and troubleshooting. So the monitor, you go under settings and you choose task. And what you'll get is a list of tasks that are being performed. Um, in this case, the task is smart state analysis. So um, you can see the scan here. It's waiting to start. It's got my VM. And now it has started. And it's showing the policy, the next step. You can keep refreshing this if you're so inclined to do so. Um, the first step it does is creates the snapshot. So what I want to do is go back to where this VM actually exists and show you that the snapshot has been created. So while this is running, what we're going to do now is for troubleshooting, we're going to drop into the, um, the actual log file on the appliance and we're going to search for this particular um, virtual machine and, and get a good idea for what's going on here. So navigate to log file and I'm just going to look in EVM log and I'm just going to look for that uh, that local 33 VM I created. And when you get down to the bottom here you'll see some info settings. Um, basically you see the part where it found the VHD, it tells you the location of it, etc. So I've just refreshed. You can see it's now scanning for software. And it'll do a bunch of other scans. And when you're done, it's going to say finished and process completed successfully and synchronization complete. And we'll just drop back in the log, take a quick look there. What you want to look for is this VM scan complete for that particular VM. And if you scroll back just a little bit, you'll see all the different tasks that were happening. So as, as we get these sections, services, software, processes, that's how the messages get fed in the task list. We scroll down on the VM, the last analyze is now the current time. And as you can see, we now have all our users and groups and services and such. So these are, at the time this process was initiated, these are all the services that were running on this particular system. That's all there is to it. You, you enable smart state analysis, you set up remote access to your host. Um, and then you can just run smart state analysis on one or more VMs. You can run a whole list if you want. Additionally, for extract running processes, all the steps up to configuring the host and, and the domain name are exactly the same. So um, you would need to perform those steps for smart state analysis and for extract running processes. Well, this concludes my presentation on smart state analysis for system center VMs. I hope you found this helpful and feel free to search the Mojo page links at the end of this presentation for additional information. Thank you very much.